Seismic reflection profiles like this provide key information about how sedimentary basins become filled with sediment. So in this short video we're going to look at the ways in which sedimentary basins may fill and what their stratigraphic representation could be. We're going to do this using this template which is a profile of an imaginary seabed shown in grey and the sea level itself shown by the thin black line at the top and we're going to compare three different ways or modes in which sediment can be deposited across this profile. And we'll represent the depositional geometries on a chronostratigraphic chart where we plot the spatial distribution of layers and show how they vary through time. So it's a spatio-temporal plot, otherwise known as a Wheeler plot. OK, so let's get going. So our first depositional model here is where sediment rains down or snows down from the sea surface down to the seabed, blanketing the bathymetry. So let's build up some strata. Here's the first layer. So as we rain more sediment down, the sediment on the seabed simply aggrades up, building thicker sequences. But you'll notice that on the left-hand side of our diagram now, there's no more space to accumulate sediment, but there is on the right. But let's keep raining and the sediment therefore is restricted to the right hand side progressively as we fill our basin up. So we're simply going to plot the spatial distribution of these layers on our chronostratigraphic chart starting with the oldest and we can follow where we are by a red arrow that's on the right hand side of the stratal geometry diagram at the top. So here's our first layer and it's deposited across the whole of the basin floor. The next layer, that too, and the next layer, so three layers deposited across the entire width of the basin. But by the time we get here, this orange horizon is restricted to the right hand side, as is the blue, as is the next orange, and as is the final blue horizon. So that's a representation on the chronostratigraphic chart. Now let's add a bit more information. We can identify stratal terminations and show them conventionally because they terminate upwards by an inverted half arrow as shown in the stratigraphic geometries part of the diagram here. And we can represent the same stratal terminations on the chronostratigraphic chart below. If we look at our stratigraphic geometries diagram at the top, we can see that the strata are not deposited on the left hand side. So there's an area of non-deposition on the chronostratigraphic chart. And we can label the terminations. This is an example of top lap and we can find it here on the chronostratigraphic chart. So that's the representation of a depositional model one. Let's go for depositional model two and in this particular case we're going to assume that sediment simply ponds in the deepest part of the basin that is available. In other words it ponds on the basin floor. Right so let's get going. So our first layer here ponded on the basin floor and as we build up our strata progressively they begin to fill up this deep part of the basin until they overstep up onto the shallower part on the left and eventually we fill the entire basin area. Again we can interpret this diagram. So again we can pick the stratal terminations. We'll do this both for the stratigraphic geometries and the chronostratigraphic chart below. There we go. So these are the stratal terminations and we can see that the reason that the older parts of this stratigraphic succession are restricted to simply the right hand side of our model is because simply because those packages of rock were not deposited on the left. So again we can identify positions of non-deposition on the chronostratigraphic chart. We can label these stratal terminations their onlap. OK, so let's go on to our final depositional model, which may be more usual, which is where the sediment is supplied from one side of our model. In other words, the shallow part of our basin area. We can imagine that just to the left of this, there may be a land area that can shed sediment into a marine basin. Because this is a very common situation, we're going to explore this a little bit more extensively. But let's start off with this diagram here, and let's put some sediment into our basin and there it is represented on the chronostratigraphic chart. In this particular case we're saying that the sediment can accumulate quite close to its source area 
but across the basin floor there's limited sediment transport, so this package of sediment is pinned to the slope or close to the slope. So let's keep going. There's the next layer and the next layer to here. So we've got three layers deposited and they're banking out across our slope, across onto the basin floor. So the slope itself has migrated towards the right. So we, if we describe how the sediment is built up, on the shallow water part here, the sediment simply built up layer on layer. In other words, it aggrades, whereas on the slope, well, the slope's migrated to the right as we banked the sediment onto it. So we have aggradation on the flat area and progradation of the basin slope. These inclined depositional surfaces are called clinoforms, and they terminate downwards towards an area of non-deposition by downlap. Okay, well let's keep filling the basin. We've seen our shallow water area is full. Okay, so let's now keep filling our basin. So here's our next package of sediment, and our next, and our next, all confined to the slope. So let's interpret this. We can see the stratal terminations here. And again, we can identify areas on the chronostratigraphic chart where there's no deposition. To the left-hand side, where deposition is limited by the availability or lack of availability of accommodation space or a hole for the sediment to accumulate in. And on the right-hand side, where non-deposition is defined by the inability of sediment to run out across the basin floor. So two different explanations for the lack of deposits or non-deposition. We can identify the stratal terminations here, the downlap, like this, and at the top there, the top lap, and find that on the chronostratigraphic chart here. OK, well, in this model, we simply filled our basin with sediment coming in, but we kept sea level constant. In other words, it was a still stand. What happens if we rise sea level now? So here's the sea level rise, and we'll shed more sediment into the basin. But you'll notice the left-hand side has now got space within which sediment can accumulate. So it does so, coming down and running out onto the old slope. So the strata come in like this now on the chronostratigraphic chart. We'll do it again, and we can see a similar thing here with the sediment running out in the orange layer and running off down the slope to taper out onto the old slope beneath. Let's keep going with another layer now and then another layer. So rather more complicated stratal geometries in the stratigraphic geometry chart. We can identify the stratal terminations in the same fashion as before. And we can identify areas on the chronostratigraphic chart where there's non-deposition. Again, the ones on the right-hand side of the chronostratigraphic chart are caused by sediment being unable to run out across the basin floor into deeper parts of the basin. On the left-hand side, non-deposition occurs because there's no space for sediment to be accumulated. Different explanations for non-deposition. Let's label up some of these stratal terminations. So this is downlap, and there's another package of downlap here where the younger strata lap down onto the previously deposited package. And we can recognize these on the chronostratigraphic chart here. Two distinct downlap surfaces. We can also identify two top lap packages here and again recognize these on the chronostratigraphic chart here. OK, so that's that part of the deposition. We're going to continue this one running now, but we need to stand back a bit to allow a bit more space for sediment to accumulate. So let's zoom out. Now this time, we'll explore another sea level change. So this time, we'll drop sea level. And as a consequence, the previously deposited rocks in the shallow water area are eroded. And we can represent this erosion on our chronostratigraphic chart here. So let's just label up our new stratal terminations here, and we can recognize them on the chronostratigraphic chart below. These are erosional truncations. 
OK, so let's continue with some deposition. And this time we'll say that the sediment runs across the erosion surface, hits that slope that's represented by the youngest orange horizon, and then accumulates towards the toe of that slope here. And that's represented here on the chronostratigraphic chart. Let's put another package of sediment in here, ponded on the slope again, slightly hindward of the blue package, represented on the chronostrat below. Another blue sequence in a similar fashion like this, stepping back up the former slope of the basin, like this. Now we see we've redefined our basin margin slope, so the next package of sediment can come down and begin to bank out across it, like this, out, rebuilding our stratal geometries as we go. So there we have the stratal geometries at the top and their history shown on the chronostratigraphic chart below. Again, let's now pick all the new stratal terminations that we've created. And we're going to add some interpretation. We can identify non-deposition, both down to the right, caused by the inability of the sediment to run out across the basin floor, and on the left-hand side, sediment not deposited because there's no space for the deposition of sediment. You'll notice we've got a wedge on our chronostratigraphic chart where rocks are missing because they've been eroded away because of that sea level fall. So let's label up some of the stratal terminations. We can identify downlap. We've now got three downlap surfaces on our stratigraphic geometry at the top. Two of those we've already considered. There's another one now we've created that's younger and over slightly to the right. So let's put them onto the chronostratigraphic chart. There they go. These, that's the downlap system we've got in there. We can identify where the strata here lap back onto the previous clinoform here and here on the chronostratigraphic chart. We can identify the erosional truncation that was created by the sea level fall and recognize it on the chronostratigraphic chart. And finally, we can recognize where strata terminate back up dip, not because of erosion, but because of lack of uh, deposition. And these are the top lap surfaces there on the stratal geometries here on the chronostratigraphic chart. So we've built some stratigraphy, seen how we generate different stratal geometries depending where the sediment is deposited and whether we have eroded parts of it because of sea level fall. So our stratal horizons can terminate upwards by non-deposition at top lap and be eroded so we have an erosional truncation. So our workflow for doing this type of analysis is on a seismic profile to trace out stratal reflectors and identify terminations. And then to take that information and simply plot it mechanically onto a chronostratigraphic chart, tracing out the lateral extent of different horizons onto that chart. We can label the various types of stratal terminations. We can recognize those on the stratigraphic geometries, in other words, on our seismic profile, and we can also recognize these and report them on the chronostratigraphic chart. We can then use all this to interpret where strata were deposited or not deposited and recognize places and periods of time when there's been erosion. Now, when Wheeler set up these diagrams over 50 years ago, he used them to explain variations in depositional fasces and to trace patterns and their evolution through geological time for a particular sedimentary succession. But, um, of course, we could do that here, should we desire. But that's another topic. For now, we'll just leave this as a way of characterising and describing stratal geometries. These concepts form the framework for describing the stratigraphy as represented on seismic profiles, in an excellent way of examining how sedimentary basins become filled over geological time.